Okay, First Chronicles 21. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And David said to Joab, to the rulers of the people, go number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan and bring the number to them to me that I may know it. Now notice our scripture here says today, Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Satan. 2 Samuel 24, verse 1. 2 Samuel 24, 1. And I do not, this, I do not I'll try to offend anybody. I'm just going to try to preach the word of God. I don't want to attack, but we're going to use the scriptures. 2 Samuel 24, verse 1. This is 1 Chronicles 21 that we're reading. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And he moved David against them, Israel, to say, go number Israel and Judah. For the king said to Joab, the captain of Oz, which were with him, go now through all the tribes of Israel from Dan even to Bathsheba and number you the people. There it is, the same thing. But we got a problem. Chronicles said Satan. Samuel, 2 Samuel says the Lord did it. So we got a contradiction in the Bible that we need to study out or we need to close the Bible for good and never read it again. But let's study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly divine the word of truth. And when we go into this study here of different verses, we're going to look at some things that are taught that are wrong. Now we have two verses, we have two beings, and they're the same. David is the same, where we have the difference between Satan and the Lord. Job chapter 1. And we can answer this very, very scripturalized with scripture to say, why does it say it's Satan in one place and God in the other, though Satan is not God and God's not Satan? So what we'll do is Job chapter 1, verse 6. Job 1, 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God, those are the angels. That's another controversy amongst the scholars, but we're not going to get into that. They're angels. Scripture is scripture. And came to present themselves before the Lord, just Jehovah. And Satan came amongst them. And the Lord said to Satan, oh, look at that. God and Satan having a conversation. What comes out? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in all the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? That's the only first time Jewish shows up. And Satan answered the Lord, said, Does Job fear God for not? For thou hast made a hedge, first time a hedge shows up, about him, and about his house, and about all that he has on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and the substance of the increase of his land. But put forth thy hand now, and touch all he has, and he will pursue thee, I mean, he will curse thee to thy faith. God, you put, your for, you put forth your hand. That's Satan talking. Unbless Job with your hand. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went from the, forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating Job's and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabines fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God is flowing from heaven. He has burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking the there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels 
and have carried them away, yea, have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their elder brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness, and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young man, and they are dead, and I only am escaped to tell thee. And Job rose and went and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. He said, Naked came I of my mother's womb, naked shall I return to her. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Now, that's an interesting chapter, verse 1. You've got the same characters. you got Satan and the Lord. But this time you have Job. Satan tells God, remove your hand of protection off Job. And he'll curse you to, the, to your face. And God says, okay, Satan, you have permission. Go after him. But only, but only don't touch Job. So you had the Sabines coming. You had the fire of God coming down from heaven. You had the Chaldeans and you had the weather of wind. All controlled by the devil. By the permission of God. Job chapter 2, verse 1. And there was a day when the sons of God, the angels, came and present themselves before the Lord Jehovah. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. There's the same story. And the Lord said to Satan, from whence cometh thou? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Isn't that interesting? The devil's walking around right now. You don't see it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and sheweth evil? And still he holdeth, that's the first time that shows up, fast his integrity, although thou, Satan, movest, only place that word shows up, me, God, against him, to destroy him without cause. Look, look, look what God told Satan there. You moved me to do all that has happened in Job's life, and yet God gave the devil the permission to do all that happened, with the exception, don't touch Job. Now you see the power of God in Satan in 1 Chronicles 21 and 2 Samuel 24 in Job 1 and 2. Satan has power, but he's got limited power of what God will give him permission. And we're not finished. And Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin. Yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thy hand now and touch his bone in his flesh, and he shall curse thee to thy face. Look, look out. Look at Satan. No mercy. The guy is weeping over his children just got killed. God touch him. And the Lord said unto Satan, behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So Satan went forth in the presence of the Lord, smoked Job with boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Okay? Satan is angry at Job. God is honoring Job. God, uh, Satan says, listen, you remove the protection off him himself, and you'll watch what he does to you. God tells Satan, you've got the power to touch him now, but don't kill him. And Satan takes off right away and smites him with boils. So we see from Job 1 and 2, the power of Satan is limited by what God gives him permission. But he has that power, fire from, this, from heaven. He has power over wind. He has power to give you boils or any kind of ailments. Now don't think that every medical ailment you got or death is because of Satan. It could be God himself, it could be Satan, or it could be your own doing. But we're going to a broader spectrum of God and Satan in the realm that we cannot see God, we cannot see Satan. Satan goes up to God and says, I want permission, because Satan can't do it outright. He needs God's permission. If you ever don't want God to brag, you don't want God bragging to the devil about you. You'll be in trouble, as Job would be. So let's look at Isaiah 45. 
Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45, verse 7. Isaiah 45, verse 7. A verse in the Bible is, is taken out of context. We'll start in verse 6, just for the context. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west, as far as east to west, that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, this Jehovah, and there is none else. I form the light. Okay. Create darkness. Genesis 1. I make peace. And create evil. That's not sin. I, the Lord, okay, that's God, do all these things. What's evil? Evil is a consequence of sin. And that's important because we're going to look at what's going to happen to David, the evil that comes upon David and Israel, because we read in Samuel, God is angry with Israel. God was really angry at Job, even though God was bragging about Job. We'll look at that in a moment. And when there is evil to be applied to a sinner, Satan steps up to the plate and says, hey, listen, that guy is so righteous, let me at him. And God's looking back, well, listen, another motive that that guy has sinned against me, but go ahead, but this is your limitation, Satan. God was mad at Israel, and Satan and Satan comes up to God, well, what about David? You know, what about Israel? Look what they're doing. All right, go ahead. Make David number one. I'll deal with them, but go ahead and make them do it. Make them sin. But the evil that will come, well, we'll study it later, later in that chapter. So it's not sin, it's evil. It's the actions of sin. And we're looking tonight at the realm of God and the realm of Satan. Genesis 18. Genesis 18, because this is important. Not everything is God's fault. Not everything is the devil's fault. And not everything is my fault. Now, we read as a family today, we read the book of Judges. Did not they say, God, you destroyed almost a whole bunch of children called Benjamin? Didn't you almost wipe off a tribe in the world? Show me where God did it. Benjamin sinned. They protected the sinners. God would pass judgment. There are Israelites who, who were killed in battle because they told God, we're going to go get Benjamin killed. God, God's like, all right, go ahead. You didn't ask me. You want to do it? Go do it. And hope a thousands died. And then they come up to God again. And God, we're going to do it this way. Okay, fine. Go ahead. Kill yourself. And then they come the third time. God, what do we do? How do we do? Do we do it now or do we not do it? God says, well, you know, Benjamin's sin. I got to deal with them. And you go through all the wilderness journey. God did not feed us. God will not give us drink. God, I mean, the earth opens up. And it swallows a particular group of people, and it closes back up, and they blame Moses for that. Like, really? Moses could have done that. And we always too quick to say, the devil made me do it. Or we're too quick to say, God is a meanie. Could be us. But let's look at Genesis chapter 18, verse 2. And he lifted up his eyes, Abraham, and looked, and three men stood by him. All right, so here is Abraham. He's looking out there. Here comes three men. 1816. Chapter 18, verse 16. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. Sodom and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. All right, so the three men get up. The meal is over. Verse 21. I will go down now and see whether they have done all together according to the cry of it, which has come unto me. If not, I will know. That's God speaking. God has been speaking to Abraham saying, shall I hide from Abraham what's going to happen? There are three men and one of them is God. Look at verse 22. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But 
Abraham stood yet before the Lord. There's the three men. Two of them get off. They start walking towards Sodom. See you later. Bye, Abraham. Thank you for the meal. Okay. So, God, what's happening? Well, not much. Well, God, you know, if there are 40 people down there, Lord, if there's 35 people, if there's 25, no, no, I won't do it. And, you know, you know, if you read the Bible, you know what goes on. It gets down to the point. And God just walks away from uh, Abraham. And this is a prayer for Lot. But we're left off with God. Two men had left, God and the angel. Um, so from 23 all the way down to 33, it's God and Abraham. The angels are gone. Oh, excuse me. The men are gone. Verse 19, ver I mean, chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at evening. Look at verse 22 of 18. The men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. 19.1. There came two angels to Sodom. There they are. Abraham was visited with two angels and God. There it is. And the two angels go into Sodom. We're not doing we're not doing the study of angels. That's another time. But 18, 18, 22, the men leave. 19, 1, they show up. Now look what the angels say in 19:13. Genesis 19, 13. For we, the two angels, will destroy this place, Sodom, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. God says, I'll go down and see. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Look what God, look what those angels say. The Lord has sent us to destroy it. You got the reading? The two angels. God is with Abraham. And it, God takes off from Abraham. These two angels come into, they have a conversation with Lot. He says, we're going to destroy these two men. We're going to destroy the city. Let's look at 19.24. Genesis 19.24. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire. That's the first time fire shows up. From the Lord out of heaven. The Lord reigned. But the angel said in, in verse 13, we're going to destroy it. Did not Satan approach with the Sabrina and with the Chaldeans and the fire from heaven and the wind to destroy Lot's possessions and his family? Did not Sodom and Gomorrah get destroyed? Satan or the devil and the angels need permission from God. God has the ultimate power of all powers that be. It's that simple. Are those angels liars? Did not they come in chapter 18? Did they not show up? Uh... Verse 2, is there not three men there, two of them angels, one of them God? Are they not in the presence of God? Do you think they're, they're liars? Do you think they would be the evil spirits of, of the devil? Having a fellowship, sitting down, eating with Abraham and God? I don't think so. And I think the angels are going to do anything. I don't think they're going to walk up to God and say, can we destroy them? Like Satan does. I think angels, you know, they're just going about their business. God said, hey, you two, come here. What? Let's go down the earth and let's go have a little chat with Abraham. All oh, right, let's go. Wow, I mean, this was great. Sitting down with Abraham having a meal. All right, uh, I've heard Sodom is a wicked city. I'm going to go down there and check it out, but I want you two to go before me. And I want you to tell me if that city is wicked as it is. And they come in in verse chapter 13. We will destroy this place, and yet God does it. Verse 24. By the permission of God granted to them, the city is destroyed. They reported back to God and say, this city is just as wicked as you. Even worse to think it to be. Even worse. And with the report of the angels, God says, okay, boom, destroy it. I give you permission. Go for it. 
Satan, I give you permission, but what was the but here? He knows there's a but. Get Lot out. Satan, you can destroy what, what Job has, <coughs> but don't touch him. Satan, you can go after Job, but don't kill him. Angels, you can just destroy Sodom, Gomorrah, and the neighboring city. Okay, you better get Lot and his family out. It's interesting. Every time God gives permission, there's a but. So now we come into another problem. Exodus 12, 12. Exodus 12, 12. We've got a problem here. we got the Passover night coming. And God has told Moses to prepare for the Passover night. And keep in mind Genesis. In Exodus 12, 12, for I, God speaking, will pass through the land of Egypt this night, tonight, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. God is going to kill the firstborn. Both man and beast against all the gods of Egypt. That's going to come into play in a moment. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be a, for you a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. God says, tonight I'm coming in the land. I'm going to, I'm going to kill. And if I don't see blood, you're going to be dead. If I see blood... I'm going to pass right by. But we're not finished. Verse 23, Exodus 12. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the, <coughs> excuse me, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Well, here we got God speaking. He's going to pass over the door. Here is destroyed. That's the first time that word shows up. Destroyer will go in. When God says, all right, that house has no blood, go in. I'm going over the doorway. See you at the next house. It doesn't say God went in the house. It says the destroyer went in the house. God will go over if you read the Bible. It's plain and simple. So we have a destroyer. And God has set forth to him, go there, don't go there. Is that not what God told Satan, Job 1 and 2? You can do that, you can't do that. Angels, you go there, but Lot is to come out, everybody else. Here we are. Those people that are under the blood, you're not going in that room. You're not going in that house. You're not going in that, wherever it is, you're not going through that door. But if there's no blood, you go in, I go over. Is that not a difference? Is that not a difference? It's clearly put forward. So the power of God here, and he has the ultimate power, being the almighty God, to the destroyer says, you can go or you may not go in through that door. God is giving the permission that he gives Satan in Job 1 and 2. The destroyer, he knows how it's not a capital D. Have you not read your Bible? You come across the judge. The judge. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 18 again. Notice that J is small j. In Genesis 18, verse number 25. At the end of the verse, shall not the judge, capital J, of all the earth do right? That capital J, those capital letters on a word that should not be capitalized, that's God. Destroyer does not have a capital D. So we see a clear stated remark as we do Genesis 18, Genesis 19, Exodus 12, 1 Chronicles, and 2 Chronicles, and Job. God has the ultimate authority, but he can use Satan. He can use angels. And he can use a destroyer. Let's go to Revelation 9-11. This is where they'll, they'll start rolling their eyes. Oh, 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 rolling their eyes. Revelation 9-11. Got an emergency. <laughs> Don't call this Revelation 9-11. 
This is not a good emergency number. 9-11, what's your emergency? The context of verse 9-11. Revelation 9-11, and they had a king over them, which is the angel. Did we just read something about angels? Of the bottomless pit, that's hell, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. That's the first time that word shows up. But in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. And I don't have that one marked. What if I skipped over it by accident? That, I can't say if that's the first time or not. So, what does the Hebrew tongue of Abaddon mean? Well, I, wonder what, I wonder what it could mean. Let's see. Let's try destruction. What could be the Greek word for Apollyon? I, I wonder what that could be. Destruction. Did not Exodus 12, 23, the destroyer? Did not Job get destruction? Did not Solomon and Gomorrah get destruction? Oh, Stalin, you know what you're doing? You're putting the Hebrew and Greek in. Oh, we don't do the Hebrew and Greek. Uh, Jesus means Jehovah saves. Yeah. Jerusalem means the city of peace. Joshua means Jehovah saves. Philadelphia church means brotherly love. Bethel, the house of God, are those not Hebrew words that we give the interpretation of what the, what the name means? Did we not open the book, the book of Ruth and it said in Bethlehem, God's given bread and it means the house of bread? You mean, oh, I see what you're trying to do. I see what you're, you're trying to do a double standard. And Baptists have double standards. They will say, Stiley, you know, you're going to Hebrew and Greek and, you know, you're messing up the whole, whole message. That's what the Catholics do. They got a double standard. Let's look at 1 Peter 5.13 real quick. I'll show you the double standard. And Baptists have them too. We are able to do, but we can't do it when it goes against what we're doing. In 1 Peter 5.13, this is a double standard of the Catholic Church. And I proved this to be so. The church that's at Babylon. Any good Roman Catholic will tell you that there we are. See, there's Peter. He's our Pope. He's in, he's in Rome. There he is right there. Rome. There we go. Signed, sealed, delivered. And we can tell you that Peter was buried in Rome. But see, look at it. There it is. That's what the Catholic Church will tell you. But let's look at Revelation 17.5. Revelation 17.5. When we look at a double standard. This right here, this Peter and Revelation is a little side note, but Revelation 17, 5, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. The Catholics say, oh, that's not us. And yet you read that whole entire chapter and that's them. The hills, the golden cup, the colors. You see, Babylon is them in Peter, but it's not them in the book of Revelation. Oh, we run to the Hebrew for words and uh, the meanings of the words, but when you're going to go for a study that we do that we don't want anybody to go again, uh, you, you know, you, you go into the Hebrew and Greek. You mean, Eli, Eli, Lama Sebekti, it means, my God, my God, why has I forsaken me? The Bible does give us opportunity to speak Hebrew and opportunity to speak Greek. Not all the time. I don't put a foundation on it. But it's interesting that the word means Apollyon and Abaddon both mean destruction. And we ran the references of those of those places. Now, another thing is Exodus 12, 23. Exodus 12, 23, when we're looking at the meanings of the names, I'm not trying to get no theological debate of words and all that, just trying to teach the Bible. In Exodus 12, 23. Exodus 12, 23. For the Lord will pass through and smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood on the lintel and on the two sideposts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in. All right, over and in. You got to know the English. I'm not doing Hebrew and Greek on that one. But look at verse 12 again. Chapter 12, verse 12. I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods 
of Egypt. AP. Capital A P E P is the Egyptian god, which means destruction. In the Hebrew, that name is Abadion, Revelation 9 11. That means destruction. In the Greek, that's Apollyon, Revelation 9 11, and that means destruction. This means how all they mean destruction. So when we read 1 Chronicles 21 1 and 2 Samuel 24 1, there is no contradiction. It's the power of God that God is angry with Israel. And God says Satan wants to attack Israel. Satan wants to devour Israel. And God tells Satan, go do it, but here's the limitations. You're not going to kill them all. Don't you touch David. It's the power of God over Satan, over the angels, and man. In 1 Chronicles 21 and 2 Samuel 24, it's Israel has sinned, and God has given Satan limitations. Don't you touch David. Don't you kill them all. And there'll be three things that David can choose. We'll study that. In the book of Job, Job has sinned. Job is self-righteous. God has given Satan limitations. Satan must obey those limitations. In Egypt, when we read in Exodus, there are limitations because Egypt sinned against God. What are the what are the limitations? If there's blood on that door, you ain't going in that house. If there's no blood, go in. Satan, you can touch whatever Job's possessions, don't touch Job. Satan, you can touch Job's flesh, but don't kill him. Angels go into Sodom, find out the action, but bring Lot out. And we run upon the thing here. When we look at the word destroy, er, in the Bible, we see in Exodus 12, 23. Judges 16, 24. Judges 16, 24. Let's see about the destroyer. Judges 16, 24. Samson. Samson, 16, 24, Judges. Look at the context. And when the people saw him, they praised their gods. For they said, our God has delivered unto our hand and the destroyer, that would be Samson, of our country, which slew many of us. The destroyer here, the context is death. Destroy. He's a child, he's a child God, according to Hebrews 11. But look at the context. Job 15, 21. Job 15, 21. These are in order. I want to go around switching all around and have to cause confusion. Job 15, 21. You know, during World War II, you know what went out and hunted the, the U-boats? Destroyers. They destroyed the U-boats. 15, 21, Job, and dreadful sound is in his ears. In prosperity, the destroyer shall come upon him. Well, that don't sound good. Destruction is upon the wicked man. Verse 20. The wicked man will get the destroyer. Kind of interesting. Proverbs 28, 24. I don't mean no disrespect, but... Look what the Bible says. Proverbs 28, 24. Here's a good one. Ready? Whoso robbed his father or his mother, that would transgress on that father and mother, and says it's no transgression. The same is a companion of a destroyer. Would you say that's God? 
Look at the presence of God. People disobey their parents. Absolutely not. Because in both Testaments, you're to honor your parents. And if you say that destroyer in Exodus chapter 12 is God, then you're making the destroyer here God. And in the presence of God, there are people who don't honor their parents. Then you would make those angels that showed up in Genesis 18, you make those, and 19, you make those angels liars. Better be careful. Because if I believe those angels are God's angels, they're not going to lie. They haven't sinned. Only the ones that fell upon the devil. Jeremiah 4, 7. Jeremiah 4, 7. And we're just running the de destroyer, all the destroyers in the Bible. Jeremiah 4, 7, the lion. Behold, your adversary is a lion. Is that not in the Bible? Is come up from his thicket. The destroyer of the Gentiles is on his way. That's the Antichrist. That's the devil. That's plain and simple. It's God protecting the nation of Israel. 1 Corinthians 10, 10. 1 Corinthians 10, 10. And this one right here, there are different opinions of where this happened, but this is the context, 1 Corinthians 10, 10. Neither murmur ye as some of them, the Old Testament in the wilderness, leaving Egypt on their way to the promised land, also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Seems that destroyer followed them from Exodus 9. God be, I mean, God be saying to Satan, hey, you got permission to go do it, but not this people. You got permission to go after them, but not that. And one of the times when, when that family that would open up in the earth, Moses told him, says, depart from them, separate yourselves from them. And God would say, hey, listen, those people are not in that group. You leave them alone. Those people right there, you open up, you swallow them. I give you permission. A destroyer brings destruction. So, let's take John 8, 44. I want to see what time we have for this one. John 8, 44. We've got two fathers running around. Actually, three fathers. The fathers that run around, we're going to look at now. Are the three that we have in the subject of what we're going what we're talking about. Here of your father the devil, small f. So there's one father. One father is the devil. That's what we've been talking about, Satan. And the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, bold not in the truth, because there's no truth in him. And when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. He's a liar and the father of it. Now, what about those angels in Genesis 19? We're here to destroy Sodom. You think they're a liar? You think they're of Satan? I throw not. And yet God destroyed it. But the angels said they were going to do it. They had the permission from God to do. So there's one father. That's Satan. Hebrews 12.4. Hebrews 12.4. Now we got through all this because... When we come first Chronicles, we see Satan said, and then we see the Lord did, and it's the same activity. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 4. And ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation, which speaketh unto you, as unto children, my son, despise not the chasing of the Lord, God. Faint not when thou art rebuked of him, God. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scorneth every son whom he receiveth. There's God the Father to the children that are his. 
We have Satan as a father. We have God as a father. We have children of the devil. We got children of God. Verse 7. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is whom the father chases not? But if we be not, if we be without chastisement, whereof all our partakers then are ye bastards, that's the only time that word shows up, and not sons. Furthermore, we have fathers of our flesh. There's a third father, a human father. We've got the father is Satan, we got God the Father, and we got earthly fathers. It can come by God, it can come by Satan, or it can come by our flesh. It's not always God did it, it's not always Satan did it, we have made done it. And the chastisement here. If you were to go to a public store, somewhere, anywhere, and grab any child and pull his pants down and start beating that child that's not your child, you are lawfully wrong. It's wrong. It's illegal, you get, you get put in jail, you get whatever civil penalties you deserve. It. That's not your child. But if you have your child, you pull them out of the story, you bring them in the car, or you bring them home, and you paddle there behind, you're allowed to because you are the parent of that child. God attacked Egypt. Egypt were not God's children. Devil, they're yours. Go get them. Job, a child of God. Satan wants to get him. God gave it, gave it him limited permission. And yet God told Job chapter 2, saying, Thou movest me. God said, That's my child. I had to beat him, though Job sinned. And we're coming across Chronicles and 2 Samuel right now. Israel sinned. All right? Let's go back to, you know, we're going to jump ahead a little bit here, but go back to Chronicles, 1 Chronicles. Israel sinned. 1 Chronicles 21. Watch where God steps in and does the punishment. Verse number 15. Here's God the Father of the children of Israel. God sent an angel into Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, destroying, destroy, the Lord beheld, he repented him of the evil and said to the angel, destroy it. It's enough. Stay now thy hand and the angel of the Lord. That's Jesus Christ. Satan moved David to count the children of Israel, but Satan didn't punish the children of angel. God sent Jesus Christ, the angel. You go get him, son. There are children. The children of Lot. I mean, that's the, ch that, the children of, of uh, uh, Sodom. The angels show up and say, hey, this city is just as wicked. As we got to pull Lot out. And they had the overthrow over the children of Sodom and Gomorrah in the neighbor cities. They're the children of the devil. And God sent an angel. That said, we'll destroy the city. It's not God could destroy it. He could give the permission. But the children of Sodom were not God's children. And that's where you get, you know, we're all God's children. Absolutely correctly not. You are a child of God by being the children of Israel. Today, you are a child of God by faith and belief in Jesus Christ. So when we see Chronicles and Satan stood up against Israel, and then we see that the anger of the Lord, and he provoked David to name Israel, who did what? They both did. God was angry with Israel. Satan's angry with Israel. And God told Satan, go ahead, you can provoke David to do it. The sin is not against David. I mean, David will sin. But the anger, according to 2 Samuel, is at the children of Israel. And they're sinning as a nation. Job sinned. Egypt sinned. The children of Sodom sinned. And there are times in our lives where God will use the permission of the devil to go get them. There will be times in our life that God says, I'll take care of it. There are times that God will say, I'll send an angel. There'll be times that God say, Satan, you can go ahead and do it. 
but the ultimate power of all powers that be is the power that God has. No one can outstep ahead of what God wants. Satan, even though as merciful and as graceless as he is, he is limited by his power. By what God says, yes or no, and even any exceptions he puts to that yes or no. That's the case. There is a death angel, according to the scriptures. 